Zorro's looking at everything a lot more. Uh, he didn't want to leave the barn. I had to give him a little tap with my stick. Uh, so he is still really attached to uh, Roosevelt, but we'll keep working on that. Uh, when you get them home, I would try to keep separating them daily for periods of time, take them grazing on a walk, or, you know, ride them around the barn or something, but keep separating them. Horses that are, you know, grazed together, stalled together, ridden together, they get really buddy sour, and it's not their fault, because they're with that other one all the time, and then they become best buddies. So it's good to keep separating them, getting them used to leaving each other a little bit like when you ride on the trail you know if there's two paths like there's a path down there have the other horse take the other path once in a while and see that you know the other horse might leave but he comes back and start working with their confidence alone okay so i got him down the road the pigs are over there as you can see him wandered around and remember we brought him up so he could see the pigs before and uh So it took a little bit to get him out here, nothing horrible, but he would have rather stayed at the barn with Roosevelt if he could have. And so when you're trying to get horses out alone, you have to have some dominance and be sure of yourself and, you know, a good rider so you can stay on if they pull anything. So, okay, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so there's lots of junk to go by. It's good for him to see. And again, a horse can be great in groups and not good by themselves because, you know, they've been relying on the other horses. You know, just like you rely on your groups of friends, you feel safer in a group, don't you? But what if you're walking home late at night and you're all by yourself, right? Every time you heard a noise, you might get a little freaked out. Like, somebody following me? Somebody watching me? So that's how they get, you know? They can be fine in groups and then you get them out alone and they're like trying to look at everything because they're scared they're trying to check it out and they're getting ready to you know run if something does jump out and, you know these horses can spin or jump forward or whatever on a dime that's what their instincts tell them so when you're doing this you got to be uh, brave and have your reins short and your hands wide and sit back and make sure you know if they do go somewhere you go with them you don't lean the opposite way and that you're ready with your defensive maneuvers to block them from spinning, rearing, or taking off. It's good. So he's behind me right now. Right? He's watching the goats. They're going back into their house. Okay, so now he's getting better. I'm going to let him eat some grass because then he'll still smell the goats because they were sitting right over there. Okay, so we want him to get used to it and think, well, when it smells nasty and I see those creepy goats, I get some grass, so maybe they are okay. And so, oh, they do stink. They stink like, like just bad B.O. <laughs> but like months of it, right? Oh my God, they're stinky. And so if you get a goat, don't get those stinky goats. But um, you want to get your horse curious, let him check out the stuff. You know, the goats left, so that made it much easier, and he's smelling. And uh, so I'll have to keep coming by here and getting him used to the goats. But just be ready, you know, on a new horse or new trails that your reins are short, you're paying attention, you're ready to maneuver your horse if you need to. You know how to do your turn on the fore forehand and turn on the haunches, and that way you can block a spin or you can block them from running away. But if you don't know how to do those and you don't know how to defensive maneuver, um, then your horses will end up spinning and getting bad habits. So just like a car, you gotta be ready. You gotta be paying attention. It's called riding, right? I always say that it's called riding. It's not called sitting people. So let's ride. Okay, so we'll get him used to this. Okay, so you see I'm a lot shorter now, huh? Because I'm hand walking him because he decided once he saw the goats, he wasn't ready for all this stuff. And so I'm gonna do what I did with Stetson. If you watched his videos, I'm gonna walk out. I'm gonna ride back because he'll be more confident and then he's already seen this stuff. And uh, I'm trying to make him brave. I'm trying not to scare him. I don't wanna have to beat him up or get in any fights. So I'm gonna let him look at everything and see that I'm a calm, confident leader. And I'm going to take care of him. 
And so to build this trust in me so then he will be a lot more brave and not so scary and more willing to try things if I ask him. But if I scare him, then they're much less likely to trust you and they're much more likely to try to run away. How do they run away? They spin, they bolt, they rear up, they buck you off. So you gotta build trust with a horse. Remember this isn't a vehicle and they gotta trust you in order to do things for you. And then you gotta show them if they're young how they're supposed to do it. Okay, because the young ones a lot of times don't know how to get over things, through things, and carry your weight with them. That's on. Come on. I just got on. We got the two mastiffs right across from us. But I already let them sit here for a while and check them out. Because this can be scary for some horses, because that thing Walter looks like a horse. He's huge. But beautiful. Okay. Now we'll see how he does. But at least I got on and he didn't go home, like, start walking really fast like he's barn sour. So he's doing fine going back. This is usually where the dogs charge the fence, but now they're locked in a back pen, which makes me very sad because now they're not up here to desensitize the horses. The goat's still up here, but he never does anything. You want to see that goat? But see, this goat doesn't smell. And who knows if Zorro sees them. Well, we're going to make sure he sees them now, right? You see him? So see, you don't care about that goat. Those other goats freak a lot of horses out. Because they think, because they're smelly and those big long horns. Alright, let's go home. So... But overall, he's doing very good now going back. And he kept uh, screaming, you know, when your horse screams, he's just seeing if other horses are around. He, you know, he's yelling out, hey Bob, Susie, are you guys here? And then he waits. And he's like, they ghosted me. Yeah, so he's all alone. I'm your only friend, buddy. Nobody's here. So he keeps screaming as we're getting closer back to home. So that's the dog. Obstacle course, and he keeps screaming to see like when. When are they close? So, and you'll see he picked up a little bit of speed. Not bad, but he is faster than he was going. So now we got the cows, but he was fine when we passed him the other direction. So I wasn't too worried that he was going to do anything. Um, his less stifle does keep giving out a fair amount, but their stifles can give out when they haven't been worked because they lose they lose. <coughs> really? They lose all their muscle tone and so their stifles the muscles around it get stronger as they get back to work and then they usually won't give out as much. But the um walking horses are very flexible so they have a lot of laxity in them so when they don't have muscles holding those things in place, and you'll tend to feel their different body parts kind of giving. So that you can feel their stifle give out, or their ankles will give out other things, because they just have flexibility in them a lot more than um, many other breeds of horses. That's how they can get that beautiful flat walk and running walk, is because of all that flexibility.